Thank you all for joining us on this beautiful warm day on our panel discussion, um, which is organized together with our partner, My Climate, who helps women in sustainable finance to be carbon neutral uh, with all our events. Um, the topic is today is what is true climate investment? Because we, we've seen that within the financial industry um, that there are so many different opportunities arising for investors to invest in green products, to invest in carbon neutral products. And the question that uh, we would love to ask and also have answered by our experts today is what is actually a most e an efficient way and what are the possibilities to invest in the carbon neutral economy? And I'm very grateful to have this very knowledgeable panel who has from different sides um, expertise on this topic. On this topic. So first of all, I would like to welcome Barbara Tayas from My Climate. She's responsible for, thank you Barbara, for partnerships um, and she's also helping companies um, how they can integrate carbon neutrality um, and climate change into their corporate strategies. Then we have um, all the way from Luxembourg dialing, dialing in Vitaline Cope. Um, she's sustainable um, investment manager at Quintet Private Bank, a Swiss private bank. Um, the specialty on sustainability. And we have Jörg Sandrock, who is one of the founders of uh, the bank Neon. Um, and they also have Neon Green, so where we'll tell more about the products and solutions, also how you can invest or how you can have account, which is also um, helping in a positive way, climate change. So before we start, um, we have, of course, the panel discussion, um, but we've also already noticed before that we um, signed into it that this is a very interesting topic and already a lot of people were asking questions in advance. So we would like to make this interactive. Feel free, all the panel members are comfortable with it, to post your questions during the conversation because we would like to make this as interactive as possible. So when you have a question, what you can do is you can raise your hand, which you can do on the reactions on, on the low right hand side of your screen, or you can also post them in the chat and then I will make sure that your question is posed out loud, whatever you feel comfortable with. When you raise your hand, I will call your name and if you're comfortable, you can post your question yourself and you can also um, put on your video screen so we can see who is posing the question. Um, so let us start because I'm only here moderating. I'm not here to, to fill the whole, the whole hour. Um, mm. What I would like to ask first of you panel members and I'll start with Jörg. Um, what, you, what is your expertise on the topic of climate and where do you see the interest and the current status from the investor side as well from the financial banking side? Because the first one to with this current status, then we would like to go where do we see the trends and how can we bridge the gap between investors and the financial industry? So Jörg, the floor is yours. Thank you. Very interesting question. And um, I might have a little bit different perspective than the other would expect as, as Neon is as a product, not a pure investment product, but rather a everyday banking account. We started to design a product that um, helps our client to um, yes, to 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 make their retail banking carbon neutral, and we see to to, to come to your question quite a high interest in in that topic. Obviously, not only by, by the number of of people who died in in this call and and might be interested in it, but we have more than three thousand clients now at an uptake of after our launch in within three days of something like almost two thousand clients, which is quite impressive in, in compared to the to the overall um, number of clients we do have and hence i would say of course it's an it's a long term trend it started maybe 3 4 years ago that people started to think about how can we uh, combine the the sustainability aspect and the financial aspect and now we we started with that um, product in this in the swiss market and i expect that more banks will will follow that trend Thank you. And um, um, because Neon, you do have a normal bank account online and you also have Neon Green. Um, can you tell me please what, or tell us, I'm sorry, uh, what actually is the difference between both of them? And um, go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, please. Sorry. Um, he, he, what we do offer is a normal retail banking account. You maybe know from, from other online banks or mobile only banks. And this is called the Neon Free. This is pretty unique in the Swiss market as we do not have any kind of base fees and, and are pretty transparent with, with our offering. And the Neon Green is in one perspective a premium product. Our clients are asked to pay five Swiss francs a month for that. And we do offer four or five different features they do not see on the, on the free um, plan. So what we do is together with my client, it's a carbon neutral account. So all kind of energy that is associated with that service is compensated. On top of that, we do offer for every 100 Swiss francs you spend with a card, we plant a tree together with a partner. We gave you some kind of five trees a month for free, so or as a as a as a as a base compensation, and on top of that, people can benefit or the clients can benefit from a um, insurance protection. So whatever you buy with a card, um, it gets a guarantee prolongation of another three years. So when you buy a television or whatever, in in with a card, you have a guarantee of five instead of two years because we think consumption sometimes can be reduced by, by using the, the guarantee. And this combination is what we call neon green. So it's Thank you so much. Yeah. and on top of it, we have a classical investment partner, it's Yoga, and Yoga um, provides also um, investment products um, linked to the green account. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, Barbara, from your side, uh, as with my climate, I think you, you see both the consumer side, you also see the financial and the corporate side. Where do, see, where do you see the current status and where do you see the trends going? Yeah, we, we definitely see that the trend is still going on. Even uh, 2020, a year which was uh, quite a, a difficult year for, for many, many companies. And uh, you would expect that also my climate would have would have really suffered actually during this year because we do get a lot of uh, um, income um, thanks to the, the offset funds, the compensation um, money that comes in. But even in 2020, we still managed to grow, um, partly uh, because our the, the work that we do with companies is, is still increasing. We really see that many companies uh, also in the financial sector are really interested in doing something they know that they have to. Um, and more and more, we also see that it's no longer a marketing thing. Like we, we in, the, in the past, sometimes we, we did had, have this fear sometimes, um, but we see that more and more people really want to make a difference and really want to do something for the environment and for climate protection. And this is uh, of course a really, yeah, really positive thing that, we, that makes us very happy at my climate. Thank you so much, uh, Barbara. Peter Wien, from your side, you're uh, at Quintet, which is a private bank. Um, where does, do you see the current status in the financial industry as a sustainable um, advisor? And also, where do you personally would like to see it going? Mm -hmm. Yes, what I'm going to say is very aligned with uh, what just Barbara just said, actually, is that we see um, that in yeah, sustainable is best investing is viewed in a more positive light than before. The focus is really shifting from risk to opportunities for people, for planet, as we discussed today, and for profit. And today, people are be beginning, sorry, to think less about how ESG is just protect their portfolio, but more how about it can enhance their portfolio. We are shifting from exclusion, from list of can do, to envisioning a better future, um, a sustainable future, and invest in it. And with it also comes a change in language from compliance and policy to opportunities and innovation. Thank you, uh, Vitaline. And that brings me to a question that I personally would like to see answered because we have a lot of uh, discussions going on on what is actually one of the most efficient ways of investing in, in climate. Um, and there is a discussion about uh, negative screening so that you do not invest in, for example, all companies. And on the other hand, um, we say, you know, if you do not invest in these companies, you lose your vote. So we see that the engagement and the voting uh, is very important. So what is your vision on negative screening versus being invested and actually use your vote? Mm -hmm. Yes, personally, I'm, I'm a strong believer of active ownership. 
Um, so when you look at exclusion uh, in a liquid market, if you exclude some company or sectors, it won't really have real world impact because someone else will buy it. Um, mm -hmm. And the greatest influence that an investor can have come from dialogue, engagement, and a voting at your door, um, at your door meeting, as you say, that is what we call together engagement and voting uh, active ownership. It is allow really to press for positive change and just to say a few words um, about the voting. We are now, um, the voting season for this year is slowly coming to an end. And we have really seen a lot of uh, key environmental proposal recently at the AGM of oil company, for example, uh, BP, Shell, uh, where really investors are pushing more and more uh, for those companies to take uh, objective on reduction of uh, green gas house emission and um, shareholders also are voting more and more to support such proposal. Thank you. Just understand you correctly, your, uh, your advice actually to be invested and to use your votes yes. um, to, in order to have an influence on the company. Yes. Thank you. Jörg, um, you mentioned that um, if someone has an account at your uh, at your bank, you plant trees for the use of the consumption, which you have, for example, with the cart. Um, maybe a bit of a provocative question, but uh, that's why we're here for. Um, is it not more efficient to spend that money directly um, to a carbon positive, a carbon neutral, sorry, or a positive influence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the. the in from that very specific perspective, it would be, of course, most, most efficient not to do any consumption at all. What we do, we offer our clients, let's say, some integrated and very convenient way to for this kind of compensation. Um, what, what we do is, or what the figures there say, and on average, when you, you, when you plant one tree for 100 Swiss francs, it, more or less covers for the for the carbon footprint you you, you do um, somehow have with this consumption and hence what we do is we we make our um, clients carbon neutral of course if they would reduce it or if they would um, spend it on on for for a reduction in different ways that could be done but on the other hand with with this idea what we started as a prototype in November and took life end of May this year. We have now planted 300,000 trees, which is quite a um, in difference compared if we wouldn't have done it. And that's why I think, yes, of course, there are more efficient ways. But on the other hand, if you look at from, from the perspective, what we actually achieve with that, I think we can argue we, we spend more than 300,000 um, trees just, just with this offer. And hence, for me, I, I think it's it's okay issue, and it's not hard cried or something. Okay, thank you so much. We already have the first question coming in from Catherine Vogeli. Um, mm -hmm. It says this is maybe a bit of a critical questions question, but to what degree can we actually think of companies as sustainable if they offset their carbon emission through compensation, through, for example, my climate, rather than really cur curing their carbon emissions? This is yeah. not going to work in the long term if the whole economy needs to it needs to get to net zero. And yeah. Wouldn't these companies better invest in actual reduction of CO2 emissions than rely on compensation? Um, Barbara, Vitaline, um, who, who, you can read the question in the chat because it's quite long. But, um, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to start to start to answer. Because I, I think that's a really good point, and, and we completely agree with that. That's that's uh, exactly what we what we stand for. It's actually to to see offsetting as the really the very last resort. To really start looking first at the ways to reduce your emissions, and uh, in the end, as for the emissions that you cannot avoid just yet, look at compensation. We see both both things actually as tools that the combination of those tools really lead to, to the best way to, to avoid climate change and to do the best, that's the best possible way to, uh, to what you can do to, to protect the climate at this stage. But definitely a big yes, companies definitely should put a lot of lot more effort, first of all, in reducing their emissions than in, than in offsetting. And if a company comes to us, to my climate, and, and just wants to offset, we will always motivate them or try to convince them to also look at their 
emissions and, and, and reduce them. And that's also a part that we that we we have the expertise for at my climate. We go with those companies and have a look at, at um, their their uh, quick wins, for example, or their biggest uh, the biggest leverage that they can do to to reduce their emissions to, the, the soon as possible. Thank you so much. Maybe Vitaline, you would like to add, some, add something from the private banking side? Um, as Barbara said, I think, um, of course, we have to reduce our emission. We have also to innovate and fund innovation uh, for green sources of energy, for new technology. But in the short run, uh, more and more studies show that it won't be sufficient um, and that uh, offsetting is crucial. Thank you. Thank you very much. In, um, I don't know, I think, I think some of you were there, but in April we had um, um, Angela de Wolf from, from Concert um, presenting for Women's Sustainable Finance, and they have developed a tool how you can actually look through different funds and different, different investment opportunities. Um, because now we have a lot of green bonds coming up, uh, a lot of uh, funds to say that they're carbon neutral which apparently is not always the case, so that it's always also a look through. Um, Vitaline, how do you take care or what would you advise um, investors to make sure that they really invest in the right products and in the right funds when the goal is to have a positive contribution? I will say that there are several ways to contribute and to fund to a climate neutral society. Um, I can maybe speak about three strategies we use at Quintet. Um, so the first one is reduce. It's about reducing the amount of green goods house emitted. And um, in terms of investment, we can actually uh, calculate the emission by companies in the portfolio and attribute a share of responsibility to an investor based on the size of its investment. And if an investor wants to reduce uh, the emission associated to its portfolio, then we would advise to select um, in companies that emit fewer emissions than their peers, peers. So that is um, so-called uh, low carbon strategy. And it has been proven that you can keep global exposure, not sacrifice return and uh, reduce significantly the carbon emission associated to your portfolio. So very concretely, you can uh, reduce the amount of emission uh, by company in your portfolio by up to 70%. Then you, you, the second strategy is about innovation. Uh, in terms of investment, you can use green bonds to fund such um, innovation and ecological projects to have, as I say, new source of uh, technology um, to reinvent the supply chain. And then the third strategy is uh, about offsetting, actually. So, for example, if you use the low carbon uh, strategy, you will still have uh, emission associated to your portfolio and you can use a carbon credit to offset for this. Um, and we believe that in terms of uh, investing, the most scalable removal technique are voluntary emission reduction. They are called uh, carbon credits commonly, and they represent a ton of carbon that is either removed uh, from the atmosphere, for example, by tree planting, or avoided, uh, for example, by funded more fuel efficient wood burning stuff. Um, and so we believe that we can uh, combine the different strategy uh, to really contribute to, to more um, to a carbon neutral society. Thank you so much. And, and um, I would love to go a bit more into the carbon credits uh, because I think it's a very special topic. And I think a lot of us have heard about it, but maybe not all people know how it works. Can you please explain, for example, how does the pricing of carbon credits, how is it created and how does it actually work in a portfolio context. Mm -hmm. Yes, so carbon offsetting really, to, to start from the basis. A carbon offsetting is a way of compensating for the generation of carbon by reducing emission elsewhere or by paying someone to reduce emission. And there are two types of uh, carbon offset, uh, compliance and voluntary. And in terms of compliance market, the most uh, known is the EU trading scheme, uh, so-called ETS. So the yeah. EU has set a cap, a maximum amount of emission that companies can emit, and um, participants can buy offset in order, in order to comply with the mandatory and legally binding caps. And if they don't meet the cap, um, if they pollute more, then they will have to pay fines. And for the voluntary market, I think the most common exam example maybe is 
um, about offsetting for flights. I think when we book flight now, now we all, we are always um, proposed by the airlines company to buy an offset. And in terms of uh, investing, as I um, yes, as I told before, so you can also buy a carbon credit to offset for the amount of um, emission associated to put you to your portfolio. Um, and that can be by, for example, by the management fee of the fund if you select a fund. Uh, so there are different uh, types for that. And you can really measure, um, now we have uh, carbon data for company and we can really measure the amount of carbon associated to the investment and um, by carbon credit for this amount and really to compensate that for that. Thank you so much. That gives us some more insight on what it actually is and how it works. Jörg, um, for Neon Green, we, are, we have one of the, of, of the words, of course, which is it's coming up very uh, often is, is greenwashing. Um, so with all the trends arising in the sustainable finance industry, we also hear that there's a lot of greenwashing going on. Um, what, in, in your perspective, does it, um, what do you see uh, from your perspective on, from the, I would say, con consumer side and also financial side? Um, and also, is it also something that you hear something about neon green? Uh, do people, um, is it greenwashing or is it a direct, positive, con direct positive contribution? Your, your, your tone is out. <laughs> Jörg, we cannot hear you. Can you hear Jörg? Barbara? No, 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 we don't hear him. But it's not on mute. Maybe your microphone is I don't know. not working. Jörg? Jörg? <laughs> I think Jörg cannot hear us as well <laughs> because he's speaking. <laughs> exactly. What I'll do is I write to him directly in the chat so he can at least read it. Uh, <laughs> in the okay. meantime, in the meantime, Barbara and Vitaline, as we can hear you, Barbara, can you please see from your point of view what mm -hmm. is and greenwashing, and also where do you see the trends going, and what are the things that people need to be cared of, need to take care of? Yeah, I think um, there's definitely a, a big, a big risk there that uh, that that in some cases there's it's really a case of greenwashing. Um, for me, this means. That's on the outside, the product or a company looks very green, but if you start to look closer, then it's uh, not green at all, or maybe even brown. Um, but maybe just uh, to speak for <laughs> Kirk, um, I, I, I don't think that Neon is, is uh, it's doing this, definitely not, because they are really having some, some, some uh, very good points that they really do for the, for the climate. So definitely not in this case. Um, but we have, I, I, from the side of, from the point of view of my climate, we are really, um, I would say, critical. Like if we get a request for, from companies um, to do a project together with us, we are really keen on checking out, first of all, are they, are they serious? Are they, do they really mean it? Uh, or they really just want the marketing perspective and just want the logo of my climate somewhere. And uh, in this case, we just, uh, we reject to do projects uh, together if, if we really have the feeling that there is greenwashing behind. Um, and also in the financial industry with all these green uh, products and, and, and uh, green funds. And, and uh, I think there is definitely a risk that there is some greenwashing there. Um, and sometimes it is hard to really look behind the title or the name of a product and, and to really dig into it to find out what is really, uh, what is really behind it. So I, there, my, my advice would really be before you just buy something or invest in something with a green title, really dig a bit deeper and check it out because sometimes it's just a name and uh, this is of course not what we want. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. I have one more question for Barbara and then I'll get back to you, Jörg, because I would like to follow up on this topic. Uh, Barbara, I, I assume, I expect that you have, um, I would say, as well from the financial industry as from other corporations in other industries, interests in offsetting their CO2 emission. Mm -hmm. um, and what I would like to ask, because I think obviously when you have a financial like an insurance company, they have a completely different CO2 offset than, for example, a transport company. 
Is that something you at my climate take into consideration and how do you deal with that in practice? Uh, you mean that they have a very different um, view on offsetting or what was, sorry, I didn't get the entire question. Um, but also, if a company wants to become climate uh, too, too neutral, mm -hmm. um, I can imagine that you need a different strategy for an insurance company compared to a transport company. And how for do sure. you deal with that in practice? For sure, it's it's uh, definitely different and it's it, it all comes up to the, the whole calculation behind. I think for a transport company, they will there we will really look at how many uh, trucks they will have and how many uh, kilometers that they drive per year. It's completely different from a service company like uh, if I, an insurance one. Um, there we really uh, have to look at different things like how many offices do they have? Uh, what is, how are the employees are going to their jobs? Do they take the public transport? Do they, do ever, does everyone have a company car maybe still? Um, so it's, it's really, it's, it's a different thing. And more and more, um, like uh, Vitalin already said, it's, it's getting more and more normal practice to also look at uh, the, the footprint of investments of financial products as well. So this is a really complex thing to really calculate uh, the footprint of an investment or of a, I would say of a, of a, um, a, a product, like a, a, a non-physical product. This is a lot more difficult to, to calculate than a, than a physical one. But there are definitely a lot of players in the markets that, um, that do offer already this data, uh, not to make any, any uh, promotion for them, but I know that MSCI is, 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 is uh, providing really good data for financial products, um, which, which allow um, investors and, 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 and uh, financial institutions to really know very quickly the footprint of each product. Thank you so much, because it's, I think it's a huge difference in, uh, in approach also. Um, mm -hmm. Jörg, let us check if, the, if, the, uh, if your tone is working and please- I hope. Yes, it yes. works. <laughs> We're all happy now. Um, can you please continue on um, the perception of greenwashing and how you deal with that? Uh, uh, maybe I, I think I should start because I think you haven't heard me. For us, I think it's, um, we, we, we had this discussion about neon green for more than two years and we want to do launch it earlier than, than we could just because we were pretty resource constrained. But for us, it was not only this product. We, as the founder team, one, one let's say anecdotal evidence, three of the four founders don't have a car anymore. We drive with public transport and then all that stuff, or maybe with, with some rental cars. Before we started with the Neon Green, we took a look on our company and identified where the company could maybe um, spend less energy. We talked with our partners, both on the delivery side in terms of um, IT partners, how they, where they do get their, their energy from and what kind of or type it is. Um, also, of course, with our banking partner, how they deploy their, their deposits with which, which kind of investments. And ultimately, of course, we offer that for our clients in terms of um, the, the neon green offering, but also here we didn't we didn't overdo the, the, the gamifications, for instance, in planting trees, because we don't want to uh, stipulate our clients to, to cons consume more than they wouldn't have done in, in a different way. Hence, I think we, we try to balance this, the, the green offer it with, with some convenience, but also of course, with the idea to reduce um, the energy consumption of, and to compensate that what cannot be reduced at, at the current stage. And for me, it's, it's less greenwashing. But of course, it's also, we are a company that needs to, to make some profits and also the green product should be a profitable product for us. It's, that's also clear for us. Thank you. Um, women in sustainable finance, we always focus on three pillars. And the first pillar is creating awareness so that people also learn what different perspective to look at things from a different perspective. The second thing is obviously education to educate people to make sure that they got knowledge on the topic. One of the reasons why we're also doing these events. And the third one is also the tools for action. And I think now it's clear that my climate and Quintet and, and Neon Green, we all have the tools. What are you doing? from your side on creating awareness and on educating um, your possible clients or your clients, how do you go out? Vitaline, may I give the floor to you first? 
Um, yes, there are several um, elements, but maybe one that is important for us is that sometimes with all the technical terms, it's very easy to get lost with all the ESG, SRI, and all the, the terms uh, financial people are using. And so what we really try to do is to stop using jargon and really to speak in simple terms that everybody can understand. If you walk to people, to someone in the, the street, he or she will understand. So that's something really important for us. Then we try to also uh, enhance transparency as much as possible. For example, I, I said I'm, I'm very involved with active ownership report. So we are really trying to share the story, to share updates of what we have done um, and how yes, how vote, how we voted, engagement, and how it's happened. So we need to actually yes, to teach people and to uh, make uh, available the information to all. Do you, do you also do events, for example, for potential? clients yes. on sustainability yes uh, we had for example yesterday <laughs> i was participating also in a webinar for our clients um also presenting it was uh, presenting our, our, our investment view and of course also integrating uh, sustainability uh, speaking actually also about uh, climate uh, investing um so that's so oh, yeah in, in this situation, we are not doing uh, in-person events so much, but a webinar uh, we are continuing and hopefully soon uh, in person. Thank you so much. Jörg, from your side uh, at Green, of course you have, you, have, uh, you have Neon, you have Neon Green. What are you doing from your side to actively um, make people aware about the sustainable alternatives? Okay, um, what, what we do for those clients who do have neon green, when you are in your financing app, you have some kind of statistics about how many trees you planted and you can see you can reach different levels, all that stuff. I tested the products we have already on, on stage five or whatever it is. Um, that is something that, that people are aware of their consumption and the implications on a positive side now on the trees. Again, we, we, uh, we launched this product only three weeks ago, so it's still, of course, in an early stage. After, after we launch it, there will be additional information. You get some information already in the app, what we do, how you can, um, what, what is involved with this compensation and what does the product look like. And as you can see, it's not working now. It, so you see a lot of information here and you can follow those links and there will be, <laughs> if it would work. Um, and this is something we do see. And this is also the difference to, a, I, I would say, pure investment product because people tend to check their, their, their everyday account almost every second day. That's the typical login rate. So they are aware of this. And we can see already the, the effect on that. When people use or are neon cream clients, they do spend differently compared to, to the neon free clients. That's, that's for sure because um, we, we have some data from, uh, I think I mentioned that from December where we had the first 1000 green clients as a prototype. And that's something we will further use for, for making them even more aware about their energy consumption and all that stuff. This is something that will be developed in the next couple of months and isn't live yet. Thank you. So, so if I understand you correctly, what you are saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the, the understanding of your saying is that, that your clients of Neon Green are more conscious consumers than the clients who do not use Neon Green, correct? Correct. That's and, interesting. And of course, the answer is also to follow up is that the result or is that, does it come with the yes. exception? That will be a question probably we can never ask with the data. That will be something <laughs> you, you will probably have your very personal opinion of what kind of bias there is involved. Um, interesting is for me that people with a neon green seem to use it more often than compared to the neon free because they, they seem to make this very conscious decision that they want to compensate a little bit for their consumption. So the average card spend for a green client is 60% um, higher um, in, in some cases than a neon free client. Well, interesting um, information. Thank you so much for sharing. 
Um, Barbara, from your point of view, my climate, um, what are your initiatives to create awareness, um, to make people change from different, look at things from a different perspective and also from the education point of view? Well, I think most people know my climate from the offsetting part. And, and uh, there is uh, actually, there are, there are three pillars within my climate. And the first one is of course, the offsetting and the climate protection projects. The second one is our consulting business, which is there to, to help companies uh, exactly how to reduce their, their footprint, their carbon footprint. And then the third pillar of my climate is actually an education pillar. So we really have a, a team of um, around 20 people who are doing only that, going into schools, uh, universities, but also in, into companies to create awareness, to, to, to build information, to... Um, yeah, try to, to motivate and to inspire people to um, take climate action. And there is, uh, I think this is really a, a really nice part of what, what we are doing actually is, is, and what is also really important in this, in, in this common problem that we have is to take everyone on this journey. I think we need everyone uh, from, from big companies to small ones, to, to children, uh, to um, people doing scholarships or whatever. Um, all these, these, these people we need. And, and I think this is, uh, this is a really a strong, a strong point, the, the, the creating awareness that we are doing. And besides this education team, one thing that we always try to um, motivate our customers uh, and, and, and I definitely our B2B customers is to when they do something good, when they offset or when they uh, calculate their footprint to also communicate this. Do good and talk about it. This is our motto. Uh, because by doing this, if you, if you do something good and you don't speak about it, there's, it, this is a pity because you can, by communicating, inspire other people doing the same. So we don't see this as, as, as greenwashing or, or marketing. We do see, we see this as a very important thing. Thank you so much. I think it's very important. What I also really like is that you really also take children into consideration because I think because what we are doing is paving the way to make sure that they got a climate where they can sensibly live in. Exactly. Um, Vitaline, um, well, all three of you, but I will start with Vitaline. Um, of course, there are a lot of opportunities and there are also a lot of risks around climate investing. Um, what do you see as one of the risks? Let's start with that, uh, and then we go to the positive thing, uh, Barbara. But what do you see as a uh, as a risk uh, in climate investing, uh, Vitaline? The first one is greenwashing, but I think we already spoke a lot about that. It's not always easy for um, clients to understand um, what is actually doing the fund, how is it um, contributing to a, to an objective. And it's, um, it's actually linked then to the second risk I was going to say. It's about impact. Most, in, most of investors are asking, uh, what is the impact of my investment? And actually, most of the time, it's very difficult to, to answer. Um, as I say, with exclusion, we can say, OK, I would exclude that all company. But it won't really create a, an impact. Uh, engagement uh, will help to, to do positive change. Um, so it's also going forward, I think the focus on impact or really measuring the outcome will be more and more important as people, are, um, the, the awareness around social and environmental topic is, is rising and people are more and more willing and yeah, asking questions, so. Excellent, thank you, Jörg. Would you like to say something? What do you see as a risk? Um, if we speak about climate investment, what are the opportunities? <laughs> For us, um, I mean, for, for this neon green product, the it, it is not a typical invest in terms of financial investment. It's more people spend five Swiss francs a month to to compensate their um, their normal consumption, and that's the benefit for them. So the, the financial risk or the financial investment might be perceived a little bit different, but for them, it's more a the the, the opportunity is to to well, yeah, to, to be aware of what they do with, when they consume and also to be aware that some of this is compensated by the trees. So it's a rather abstract level of, of return and invest. 
yeah, when we had the, the discussion, of course, we've been preparing this panel discussion. And then um, Jörg and I were also talking about the, the possibility. Uh, one question that, that I asked is uh, because now you compensate, uh, for example, the 100 Swiss francs that you spend with your card. But do you also compensate? I know at this point you, don't, you do not do it yet. But, um, I have to mute someone. Sorry, Kai, I have to mute you. Um, um, one of the things that, of course, I, I would welcome is if you have the possibility that you also can compensate the way that you use your car, the way that you use the money, so that you, when you when you go on a holiday by air by air travel, that you compensate it in a different way than when you go by bike, for example. Um, my question to you now is: What, in your wildest dreams, uh, would be the possibilities for neon green going forward? Where do you like to see it going? Yeah, I think what you mentioned would be, of course, very interesting and right now seems to be a little bit of a challenge, but it's also possible is um, to, to, to educate the client or our client um, based not on the pure amount, but based on what she or he actually purchased with a card, what um, impact that has, that specific product has. A very simple example, if you spend 50 Swiss francs on your gas station, the the impact might be quite different if you would uh, spend 50 for 50 Swiss francs for a train ticket with SBB. And of course, for us, it's the challenge. We we see some kind of merchant information, so there might be some some ideas how we can um, interfere if you buy at that merchant. The the typical footprint might be X, and if you buy for the same amount at another merchant, it might be the half of X or whatever. So that's something we, we will investigate. There are some examples in the European market, not in, in Switzerland that yet. So that is something that I think would help to increase awareness, to increase also the, 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 or the, the, the understanding from clients perspective. When I do A, the, the impact for my environment is B, and this is something we, we could, of course, help with with the neon green. We will, in the next month, improve the product slightly. Also, with, that's some, something we, we can already um, um, reveal. But yeah, that the wildest dream would be to, to actually to be able to calculate the actual footprint and not only the, let's say, the average by calculating one tree for hundreds with francs. Thank you, Jörg. I think that's very promising also if we will be able to do that uh, in the future. Barbara, from my client point of view, um, what actions are expected uh, from a financial institution towards their customers when it comes to the influence of investments? Where do you, where do you see that? I think most of all that they uh, inform their clients about uh, their investment products, for example, or about the product that they're, that they're selling. Um, because that is sometimes a really big, uh, I, I would say it's sometimes really difficult or complex to, to really find out what is, what is behind uh, their investment fund or, or, or what is there. Um, and, and I think at the first stage is really informing your customers, really letting them know what you're doing in terms of um, ESG, for example. Uh, are you just doing some exclusions or are you doing some engagement? Really informing them and maybe not making it so hard for them to find this information. Um, that is definitely the first thing. Also, maybe as very importantly, ask them about their preferences. Know your clients. Um, are, are they interested in, in uh, the E, the S, the G? Um, what what is, is their main focus? It's definitely also something really important. Um, and then uh, thirdly, yeah, try to, to really make their portfolio as, as I would say going into the right direction for the future, like slowly moving them, or, or I, I would even say quickly moving them into the green direction. Uh, but some of them, as we all know, go faster than others. Some of them are a bit slower, but that's, that's of course normal as well. Yeah, we always say every step in a positive direction is a step in the- in For the sure. Yeah. That's also our, our what we believe in. <laughs> when already looking at the time, I think, Time is passing by quickly when you're having fun. Uh, so it's already almost 10 to 6. I would like to leave the floor for questions from the audience. If you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand, put it in the chat, or even open up your screen to post your question before we, um, before we close off. Are there any questions?
Have we been that clear? Thanks. I see some some nodding. Um, then um, I would I would I would like to do before I will officially close off for the ends. I would like to hear from you, uh, Jörg, Vitaline, Barbara, um, your summary on uh, what is true climate investment. Just maybe do a statement. And what is your key takeaway for the audience today? Jörg, let's start with you, please. Oh, sorry, Jörg, I hope you can hear us because the, uh, I think we're becoming experts in this. I'm gonna, yes. um, Jörg, can you hear us? I can hear you. I'm sorry. Typically, it's not the first video conference I, I have, and typically it works, but maybe in this context, it's the first time. For me, the, the, the climate invest in or the, the invest in the context of neon green is, of course, that you don't um, think in the you, you will get your return not only in a financial way, but maybe in a in a way that you you are aware of what you're doing with, with when you consume something and you you can be sure that you did a little bit to to increase or to decrease the impact of your consumption. And that's the the idea of, of neon green in, in, in an investment perspective. Thank you very much. To be more more aware about your consumer consumer behavior. Um, Vitaline, from your side, what is your key takeaway to the audience today? Um, maybe I can speak about two positive uh, practices that I see um, because I spoke about uh, greenwashing before. So I think that uh, in finance, as in fashion, the best sustainability program are those where sustainability is an integral part of the brand. Uh, companies such as Pactagona have created an entire business on being sustainable and use that as the competitive advantage. And for banks, uh, for Quintet, for example, this means linking the corporate sustainability to the investment strategy, having the behavior and the product reinforce each other. And another example also uh, is putting sustainability investing uh, at the core and not just at the sideline, integrating sustainability into all investment decision. Um, and we think that if we do that well, um, it will also improve the investment decision process. It helps to see the full pictures, the hidden risk and the hidden opportunities. And looking forward, um, I think there is so much more capital to, con to mobilize, to contribute to a better world. And that we need to get people uh, inspired, enthusiastic about that. Um, and speak in positive terms as we did today about the opportunities to help uh, to, to contribute to a better world. Thank you so much. Barbara, what is your key takeaway from yourself and for my climate for our audience today? Well, definitely, I think, like I said before, I think it's important to know what you're investing in. Uh, is, is the, the fund based on, on, on an exclusion strategy only? This, uh, this means that they just exclude some, some sectors or some companies. Is this really what you want? Or do you want to go a step further? Then maybe you have to look for a different investment product or a different company who's offering it because you have some, um, yeah, you, have, you definitely have some experts already in this field uh, who, who do offer something that you're looking for. That's, uh, there is something for everyone. So really know what you want and, and uh, find out who, uh, who is, is offering this. And then also, I think it's, um, as Vitalin said, um, definitely look at what, what do you think is the, is the future? Is there, uh, you want to invest in, in uh, future technologies, then go for that. Um, or, or maybe you want even to go a step for, forward and, or a step further and, and go really into impact investing. Uh, definitely a very, a very uh, interesting niche as well there. Um, and then maybe one last thing or one last takeaway, I think we haven't discussed this today, but also really important is that if you uh, invest sustainably, um, I think there always has been a big uh, question mark about um, the results, the financial results, results of this sustainable investing. And I think there has been, there has been so many studies uh, these days that show that uh, sustainable investing go, gives at least the, the, the similar or, or maybe even better results than, uh, than the, the classical investing. So I think this is a fear which is probably not even not necessary. Thank you so much. So um, then we 
we can finish off a bit early. So that means that our Belgian uh, Vitaline and Barbara, you can actually make it before the match Belgian uh, Denmark. And, uh, I would like to thank all of you, uh, audience, for being here on this extremely hot day with 30 degrees in Zurich, um, for being here, for showing your interest, um, for making sure that what we do is, is interesting to you. I want to thank the panel for your very inspiring, interesting, and also your uh, discussion and the expertise that you brought in from all the different levels. Um, next event, Women's Sustainable Finance, is going to be on Tuesday, the 29th of June, between 6 and 7 p.m. on... Um, um, how to protect the marine Arctic area and how important that is by uh, Vandana Ryder. And we will be a bit um, slowing down in July and August because most people will be on holiday. Um, if you have any questions uh, to one of the panel members or to Women's Sustainable Finance, feel free to, to um, contact us directly. Um, we will share the presentation, the, the recording on our website. And from here, I would like um, to wish Belgium good luck. I would like to wish the football team of the Netherlands, of course, as I'm Dutch, good luck for this evening. Thank you all for being here. I wish you a very nice evening and I hope to see you soon again. Have all a nice evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>